All right, students, thank you for watching this video. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so when multiplying exponents with the same base, we go ahead and add those exponents, right? So we keep that same base of x, and then 4 plus 5 gives us 9, exponent of 9. All right, question number two. We have our same base of a, and we add those exponents all together. 3 plus negative 6 plus negative 1. That gives us negative 4. All right, so that's not our final answer, right? Um, so we need to go ahead and move it down to the bottom, make that a positive. All right, so this is our final answer, 1 over a to the fourth power. Uh, question number 3, same thing. We have our same base of 2. And then we raise it to the, well, 2 plus a negative 5, that's negative 3. Negative 3 plus 8 gives us 2 to the 5th power. We know what 2 to the 5th power is, though, so we need to simplify that. That's going to be 32. All right, question number 4. We know that when we have the same base and we're dividing, we subtract those exponents. All right, so an exponent of negative 3. 5 minus 8 gives us negative 3. And then remember, we don't want negative exponents. So we make it a fraction and we move it to the bottom. So 1 over x to the third power. Remember, when you move it to the bottom, we make that a positive. Question number five. We have the same base, the same base of x. We need to figure out what the exponent is going to be. 10 minus 4, that gives us x to the sixth power. Question number six. Same thing, same base of 3, and then what's our exponent? 8 minus 4, that gives us 3 to the 4th power. Once again, anytime we have an actual number, we can go ahead and figure that out. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, that gives us 81. Question number 7, this is where we start to get a, a little bit uh, more involved here. But once again, just take it one at a time. So anytime you see a negative exponent, Probably a good idea to make a fraction. The 3 stays on top. No negative exponent. m to the negative 8 power. That is a negative exponent, so we go ahead and bring it down. m to the positive 8th power. n to the 0 power. That's just 1, right? Multiplied by 1. So that's going to be equal to final answer, 3 over m to the 8th power. I guess I'll just write it over here. So that's our final answer. All right, question number eight. So we have a power raised to a power. Remember this exponent. We have to distribute it to each of these exponents. All right, that's technically a one. All right, so we put our bases, A and B, and then we figure out what those exponents are going to be. Nine times four, that gives us 36. B, 1 times 4, that gives us 4. So let me just write our final answer a little bit more clear. It's going to be A to the 36th power, and then B to the 4th. All right, question number 9. I went over this in class, um, but at the front, that's technically a negative 1 to the 1st power. And then in our numerator, that's going to be B to the 8th power all over 5, right? And all of that squared. So we have to distribute that 2 to each of those exponents. That's technically an exponent of 1. That's an exponent of 8. And that's an exponent of 1 as well. So negative 1 raised to the second power Multiply that exponent, that's going to be b to the 16th. And then in our denominator, that's going to be 5 raised to the second power, right? 2 times 1. All right, final answer. Negative 1 squared, that's just positive 1. b to the 16th power, that stays there. So b to the 16th power all over 5 squared, which is 25. All right, question number 10. We see a negative exponent, good idea to make a fraction. Negative 8, that's just a number. It's not a negative exponent. We leave it in our numerator. 
x to the negative second power, we bring it down, and then we square it, right? Since it's a negative, we make it a positive. That's our final answer, negative 8 over x squared. All right, question number 11, negative 4, d to the 7th. Once again, we have to distribute that 2 to each of those exponents. That's technically an exponent of 1. Distribute it to there, distribute it to there. So we'd have negative 4 squared, and then d to the, well, 7 times 2 gives us 14. So negative squared is going to be 16, or sorry, negative 4 squared, that gives us 16, and then d to the 14. That's our final answer. All right, question number 12, starting to get a little bit more trickier. Try to get rid of your parentheses first, though. With this 3, when there's an exponent, we distribute it to each of these, right? So we have to have 2 there, 2 there, and then 2 that 6. All right, so we're going to have 2 to the 3rd power, c to the 3rd power, d to the 18th power. All of that being multiplied by, once again, distribute that 2. 5 times 2, that's c to the 10th power, d to the 4th power. Right, now we have all of this, and then let's just figure out what our final answer is going to be. Right, 2 to the 3rd power, that's just 8. And then we have our bases of c and d, and then let's figure out those exponents, right? We add those exponents, so 3 plus 10 gives us 13. And then 18 plus 4 gives us 22. Final answer. All right, question number 13. All right, so the last problem, you got rid of the, the parentheses first. Technically, we don't need parentheses around these. All right, so we just multiply the numbers. That's going to be positive 10, right? Negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. And then we put our bases x and y. And then we figure out what our exponents are going to be. All right, so 2 plus 6, that gives us x to the 8th power. 4 plus 2, that gives us 6. Final answer. Question number 14. All right, very similar to number 12. Distribute that 3 to each of these, right, and get rid of those parentheses. So we will have 4 to the 3rd power, x to the 3rd power, and then y to the third power. All of that being multiplied by 2 to the third power, right? Distributing that 3, x to the ninth power, and then y to the 21st, 7 times 3. And then this problem now looks exactly like we did with number 13. So we multiply those numbers out. 4 to the third power, that is 64. Multiplied by 8, I believe that's 5, 12. All right, and then we have our x and our y. Now we figure out our exponents. Multiplying exponents, we add 3 plus 9 gives us 12. Uh, sorry, that should be on the x. I apologize. x to the 12th power. And then y's, we have 3 plus 21. That should give us 24. Final answer. All right, question number 15. We have an exponent on the outside, so we distribute that exponent to each of those. 8 to the 3rd power, x to the negative 21st. All right, we have a uh, negative exponent, so make a fraction. Right, 8 to the 3rd power. 8 to the 3rd power is 5 12. Right, that stays in our numerator. But that negative exponent, so we put it down in our denominator. That's our final answer, 512 over x to the 21st. All right, 16, 13 to the 0 power. Anything raised to the 0 power is just one, easy one. Next one. We distribute the negative 2 to each of those, right? Anytime we have a power outside, so 4 to the negative second power. 3 times negative 2, that gives us x to the negative 6th power. We don't want negative exponents. Make a fraction. 
1 over, right, sorry, make a fraction. I don't want to get ahead of myself. 4 to the negative second power. We put it down in our denominator. x to the negative sixth power. Also, we put it down x to the sixth power. And that's why I knew that that was just going to be a 1 in the top. And then we write our numbers out, right? 4 squared, we know that's just going to be 16. So 1 over 16 x to the sixth power. Final answer. Number 18, same base. We divide those bases. So we, um, sorry, we divide the as exponents. So we are subtracting them, right? Uh, so negative 10 minus the negative 8, that'll be negative 2. All right, we don't want negative exponents. So we go ahead and make a fraction. We bring that 7 squared down, right? Make it a positive. <clears throat> ah, sorry, not our final answer, right? So 1 over 7 squared, that's going to be 49. That is our final answer. All right, question number 19. We have two cubed. Sorry, losing focus. There we go. 19, two cubed. Um, so we uh, first, sorry, we get rid of our fr um, parentheses first. Distribute the two to each of these. So we have two cubed and then multiply by two squared m squared. All right, so two cubed is eight, two squared is four, so eight times four is 32. And then we still need that m squared. Question number 20. We don't have the same base, so we can't do anything with these exponents. Sorry, I don't know why it keeps going out of focus. Okay, so don't have the same base, but we do have negative exponents. Make a fraction r to the negative eighth, we move it down. s to the negative four, we move it up. And yeah, that's our final answer. That's all you need to do for that one. s to the fourth over r to the eighth power. All right, question number 21. So with fractions, always just try to make a fraction first. Negative 14 over 21. Simplify the numbers first. That's going to be 2 over 3, negative 2 over 3. Right, our greatest common factor is 7. 7 goes into 14 twice, 7 goes into 21 three times, negative 2 over 3. We write our bases, A and then B, and then we figure out our exponents. 5 minus 2, that gives us A to the third power. B, 3 minus technically 1, so 3 minus 1 is just 2. And yeah, that's actually just going to be our final answer. Let me just write that out. Negative 2, A to the third, B to the second power, all over 3. All right, question number 22. So always try to simplify inside the parentheses first, right? Order of operations, PEMDAS or GEMDAS, however you want to think about it. So inside the parentheses, 12 divided by 3, right? Let's, let's make our fraction first. 12 over 3, that's just going to be 4. And then our bases are P and then Q. And then now we need to figure out what our exponents are going to be. With P, we have 3 minus 1. That's going to be to the second power. And then 3. Oh, no, sorry. We don't have a Q. Our Q is just left in our denominator. Sorry, let me just rewrite this then. So it just stays in our denominator, q to the fourth power. All right, and then we still have all of it raised to the third power. So inside the parentheses is all simplified, and then we go ahead and use exponents next. All right, so this is going to be 4 to the third power. We have to distribute to each of those exponents. p to the sixth, all over q to the twelfth. And then we rewrite our numbers, 4 to the third power, that's 64, p to the sixth, and then q to the twelfth, final answer. All right, question number 23, inside the parentheses, always simplify that first. All right, so we still have that negative on the outside, but let's just make it a negative one, same thing, just to make it easier for ourselves. Negative 1, and then 
Uh, let's see, we have our bases of A. A to the, well, 4 minus 6, that gives us negative 2. And then our B, we only have just that B, so let's keep it down there. If it helps you guys, write it to the first power. And then all of that is going to be raised to the fourth power. So only after you simplify the parentheses, and then you go ahead and move on to the exponents. Right, distributing that 4 to each of those, that's going to be negative 1, all of that raised to the fourth power. Negative 2 times 4, that gives us a to the negative eighth. And then all over 1 times 4, that gives us b to the fourth power. All right, so simplifying this, we make a fraction. Negative 1 to the fourth power, that's just going to be 1 multiplied by a to the negative eighth, we bring it down. And then b to the fourth, that just stays there. Oh, so technically I didn't need that multiplication there, but that is our final answer. One over a to the eighth, b to the fourth. All right, question number 24. Simplify the parentheses first. So let's see, five over two. And then our bases of P, 3 minus 1 is just to the second power. And then Q to the fourth, we don't have any other bases in there, so we just keep it as Q to the fourth. And then we go ahead and now we have to deal with the square. So we distribute that 2 to each of those. That's going to be 5 squared. 2 times 2, that gives us P to the fourth power all over 2 squared, all uh, q, 4 times 2, that gives us 8. All right, so now our last step is just to simplify those numbers. 5 squared is just 25. p to the 4th, we just keep it there, not a negative exponent. 2 squared is just 4. And then q to the 8th, same thing, right? We just leave it there. All right, question number 25. If you remember from the lesson, if we have a negative exponent, we thought about flipping the fraction. But if you want to think about it the longer way, uh, the more or without thinking of shortcuts, right, we just distribute that negative 2 to each of those. So 2 to the negative second, all over 9 to the negative second. Negative exponents, we get rid of those. Move that 2 squared to the bottom. Move the 9 squared up. 9 squared is just 81. 2 squared is just 4. Number 26. Simplify inside the parentheses first. You can simplify that, but we get rid of those parentheses by distributing that 2. So let's make a fraction. We have to have negative 1 squared. 5 times 2, that's 8 to the 10th power b uh, to the second power, right? 1 times 2, and then all over, let's just rewrite that denominator, 12, a to the seventh, b to the fifth. All right, so that's going to be equal to, let's just make our fraction. Negative 1 squared, that's just going to be positive 1, and then 12 in the numerator. I just try to get rid of the, or not get rid of it, but just try to rewrite the numbers first. And then we have our bases of A and B. Well, 10 minus 7 gives us 3. 2 minus 5 gives us negative 3. And then we go ahead and get rid of our negative exponents. Our final answer, <clears throat> 1 still stays in our denominator. Technically, we don't need that 1. A to the third power stays in our numerator. Negative exponent, we move it down. So 12, b to the third power. <clears throat> right. Question number 20. All right, this one looks a little bit trickier, but try to get rid of, uh, simplify the parentheses first. All right, so over here, inside our parentheses, uh, let's just start with this one from left to right, easiest. So x to the negative third power, <clears throat> move it down. y to the negative second power, we'll move it up. 
All right, so that's simplified. And then we have to think about simplifying this other one. Let's try to zoom in. There we go. All right, so we're going to have 3 squared. Distribute that to y to the 3 times 2. That gives us 6. 4 squared. Uh, x to the 4 times 2 is 8. <clears throat> All right, and then now we have to go ahead and figure this out. So y squared multiplied by y to the 6th, that's going to be a, let's start with our numbers first. 3 squared is 9. Our y's combining them, 2 plus 6, that gives us y to the 8th power. In the bottom, we have 4 squared, that's 16. 3 plus 8, that gives us x to the 11th. That is our final answer. All right, number 28. All right, 28. So let's go ahead and simplify this using our rules. Uh, we're just going to have 8 and then x to the 4 minus 6. That's going to be negative 2. All right, don't want negative exponents. So we have 8 over x squared. Move that x squared down. All right, then we'll just go ahead and plug it in. So we have negative 2 for x. So 8 over negative 2 squared. That's going to be the same thing as 8 over 4. Our final answer, 8 divided by 4, is just 2. Uh, 29. Uh, we move the negative exponent down, so we just make a fraction. 3 stays in our numerator. We bring it down n to the third power. All right now we go ahead and plug it in. So that's going to be equal to 3 over negative 5 to the third power. <clears throat> All right, if you input this into your calculator, you will get negative 125. And we still have our numerator of 3. All right, so that's our final answer. 3 over negative 125. All right, question number 30. R to the 0 power, we know that's just going to be 1. S to the negative 2. Remember, negative exponents. We just go ahead and bring it down. So in our numerator, we'll just have the 1. Denominator, S squared. All right, technically they tell us that R is equal to 8, but that just disappeared. 8 to the 0 power is just 1, so you still get the same thing. S is equal to 10, so let's see, 1 over... 10 squared, that's just going to be equal to 1 over 100. So you could just keep that as your final answer. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys on Wednesday.